Okay, so welcome back. This is actually the second time I'm doing this lesson because the last time the volume was weird. So hopefully this will work out better and you can hear me okay. I will find out, I guess, if I preview this. But um, hopefully you're not looking like this poor little guy here. He's not having too much fun. He looks a little bit uh, blown away by all this stuff and hopefully today won't do the same thing. I can tell you that today the lesson is going to probably require you to concentrate a little bit, but I know that you can do it if you put your mind to it, as they say. So we have to think back uh, to mixed numbers when we talk about mixed expressions and mixed expressions and complex fractions. Mixed numbers, if you remember, are kind of a combination of an integer and a fraction. So five and a third. It's not exclusive to positive numbers either. We could have negative four and two sevenths. You could have, uh, you know, negative 16 and 11 25ths, whatever the case may be. And I think if most of you remember, the easiest way to convert a mixed number into an improper is we would multiply the integer by the denominator and then add that numerator. So you'd get 5 times 3, 15 plus 1, 16 thirds for that fraction. Now the question is, why did we do that? Because I told you so. Because your fifth grade teacher told you so. Really that's not the case. If you think about what this really means, it means 5, oops, lost my pen again, 5 plus 1 third, right? It's 5 and a third. So essentially what we're doing is we're converting this 5 here into a fraction, 5 over 1. To get a common denominator, we're multiplying it by the 3 over 3, which is why you do this multiplication here, okay? And then adding the 1, making it 16 thirds, okay? So that's that. This process, whoopsie, this process here is what we're going to need to do to convert an algebraic mixed number. Uh, or mixed expressions. So you have to think about really how we converted mixed numbers into um, improper. So what you're going to do, the process is you're going to write the integer as a fraction with a denominator of 1 or the variable component that's not a fraction with a fraction as a denominator of 1. And you're going to add the two fractions by getting common denominators. So let's take a look at what this really looks like. So I think I'm probably right now you're a little bit confused. Okay, so I'm going to write this y over 1, and I'm going to add those two fractions. So that's going to be a common denominator of just y. So I'll multiply that by y over y, which is 1, and I will get y squared plus 5 all over y. And I was able to add those, okay? So that's a mixed expression. So if you look at the next mixed expression, the common denominator is basically the denominator of that second fraction, or x minus 1. So I'm going to multiply this by x minus 1 over x minus 1. That is going to give me, okay, x minus 1 times x plus 1, you should know from your difference of perfect squares, is going to give you x squared minus 1 from the numerator here, just multiplying these guys out, okay? And then I'm going to get minus 1, which is essentially this component here, all right? And then that's all over, I wanted that to be blue, all over <laughs> x minus 1. So that's going to simplify to x squared minus 2 over x minus 1. And that cannot be reduced, okay? We cannot be looking at those x's and thinking that they can be canceled out. So I'm going to let you um, take a look at 3 and 4, pause it here, and come back and check your answers with what I do, okay? The first fraction I will multiply by x plus 3 over x plus 3 to get a common denominator, which is going to give me, if I multiply those two binomials, that's going to give me x squared minus 2x minus 15, and then I still have this minus x hanging on all over x plus 3. Simplifying, combining like terms gives me x squared minus 3x 
minus 15 all over x plus 3. And that cannot be factored. You could try to see if you could cancel out the x plus 3s, but it can't. The second fraction, this number 4 here, I'm going to multiply the first fraction by c minus 3 over c minus 3, which is going to give me 8c minus 24 from this first multiplication part, and then just plus the c plus 2 over c minus 3, which is going to give me 9c minus 22 over c minus 3. And that, my friends, is simplifying mixed expressions. Now we have to talk about complex fractions. Complex fractions are fractions that have one or more fractions in the numerator or denominator. So if you look at this example, it has one third in the denominator, not allowed. It can be simplified. Therefore, it must be simplified to be um, considered a final answer in simplest form. So simple fractions, therefore, do not have fractions in the numerator or the denominator. Let's take a look at this example. Uh, basically, what I'm doing is I'm just simplifying this denominator, and I'm adding 2 plus 1 third. Many of you already know that that's 7 thirds, but let's do it the old-fashioned way and put the 2 over 1, multiply numerator and denominator by 3, and you get 6 thirds plus 1 third, and that's going to be 1 over 7 thirds, which is the same thing as 1 divided by, remember that this fraction bar here symbolizes division, 7 thirds, which is 1 keep change flip, which is just 3 sevenths. Now, I know it's sort of, that. that's like, okay, you took a long way to do a pretty simple process, but the reason is when we get into complex fractions involving variables, it's not quite so um, second nature. So let's look at what we actually need to do. We need to make sure that we simplify both the numerator or denominator to a single fraction. Then we go ahead and replace that fraction bar with a division symbol, okay, like I just did, and divide as usual by keep, change, flip. So, really, in this process, you have to think about eating the elephant one bite at a time, okay? You're just going to look at one section of it, simplify it, move on, simplify, move on. So, what I'm doing here is I would like to simplify this part. So, 1 third minus x, my common denominator is really 3x. I multiply this fraction by x over x, this fraction by 3 over 3, and I get x over 3 minus 3 over x, uh, sorry, x over 3x minus 3 over 3x, which is what you have here, which is going to give me then x minus 3 over 3x. Now I take that numerator, which is x squared minus 9, that's here, my division bar becomes a division symbol, and then I keep, and I'm going to factor this, x minus 3 times x plus 3, write it over 1, change, flip. And then we just follow our rules for multiplication. And so as you can see, your final answer should be 3x times the quantity x plus 3 or 3x squared plus 9x either is an acceptable answer. In this case, you could have had this. And that's fine. Okay? Let's take a look at some examples here. Yikes! Ah! Hold the presses. Okay. One bite at a time. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're going to do in the numerator. My common denominator is x. I'm going to multiply the first by x over x, the first uh, whole number, and I would get x plus 1 over x in my numerator. All over, now my common denominator here is going to be x squared, so I'm going to multiply by x squared over x squared, and that's going to give me x squared minus 1 over x squared. Now Step is to rewrite it. And please be taking advantage of the pause button here. Anything I go too quickly on, pause, rewind, make sure you understand it. But really, everything that I'm doing here, you know how to do. It's just there are so many steps because we're doing it multiple times. Okay? So just make sure you can follow me. Now I'm going to rewrite it. Here's my numerator. I'm going to Write the, I'll write the division bar, divided by x squared minus 1 over x squared. Now I'll keep change flip. 
And I'm going to factor this because I see that it's necessary. Difference of perfect squares. So now I can start canceling my x into my x squared, knowing that I have the x left over. Okay, the x plus 1 into the x plus 1, knowing that I have that left over. And we still need to be able to keep track of our leftovers. Okay, final answer. Not too bad, right? You can do this. All right, let's look at the second one. Common denominator in the numerator is 7. So I'm going to multiply my first fraction by 7 over 7. That's going to give me 7x plus 5 over 7 in the numerator. Now, separate process in the denominator, okay? You have to look at these guys totally differently, even though they have the same common denominator. So I would get 7x minus 2 over 7 in my denominator. Now I'm going to rewrite it. Instead of the fraction bar, I'm going to use the division symbol. And 7x minus 2 over 7. Then I keep, change, flip. And the only thing that I can cancel there is the 7s. Don't be looking at those 7x's. Okay, nothing can be done there. All right, 7x plus 5 over 7x minus 2. They are parts of groups. They stick together. They do not come apart. <clears throat> All righty. I think I would like you to try these on your own. I think my video is long enough, and we'll start with these in class tomorrow. I know you can do this, guys. Just take it one step at a time. Good luck and good night.